Hey guys, so recently a ton of people have been asking what add-ons am I using for Blender, like my complete add-on suite. Um, also, how do I set up my Blender, my UI, all that type of stuff. So this is basically going to be the video where I show you all of that. Feel free to copy my settings, you know, to the T. It's worked for me very well and it'll probably work for you very well. So feel free to copy how I have my Blender set up. I think it'll help you a lot. So first things first, I think one of the most common questions I get is how do you get this nice edge highlight? Because by default, the cube looks like this. So basically what you do is you go up here to this uh, viewport orb section. You're going to click the drop down. And as long as you're in the solid view, you can turn on cavity. Now I have mine set to both. I think by default it's set to screen. I set mine to both and the settings I have here are 1.5, 1, 1.5, and 1. Now, if you have hard ops, you can press Alt V and enable and disable cavity. That way, the same menu is accessible up here, though. I don't use shadow that frequently because shadow actually, as um, in my experience, has made Blender very, very slow and laggy, even though I have a powerful machine. I have a 3090, really good CPU, and sometimes the shadow still lags Blender. So that's basically something I keep turned off, and I just keep cavity turned on only. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to either use this matte cap, the default one, or I like to go to studio and use the second studio orb. I kind of prefer the shading of this one, just personal preference, but there's a ton of different options here you can play with just to kind of see, you know, what different shading effects you want on your cube. So that's really all I do for the basic setup of the objects inside a blender, nothing crazy. Now as for overlays, what I usually do is I turn off the text info just to keep it clean. So I turn that off. Statistics I keep turned off as well. And the extras and relationship lines, I turn those off as well. And it just keeps my UI nice and clean. Also, a lot of you probably have the massive X, Y, and Z gimbal up here. I have the small one. I'd recommend turning on the small one because it's just a bit easier. So if you go here to edit and then preferences and under, I think it's either interface or viewport, under viewport, there's an option here for um, simple axis. Now by default it's going to be set to interactive navigation and I personally don't like this because I don't need this to be that large. I don't need this so I change this to simple. You can also turn it off if you prefer. Um, I just keep it on simple axis because I just prefer it that way. And basically whichever direction the little red, green, or blue lines are pointing represents the positive axis and the opposite of those lines will be the negative axis. Not really, doesn't really matter. I just, you know, go off what I see in the viewport, but just in case you're curious, that's how I make that gimbal a little bit smaller. And as for these panels right here, I don't actually use these. For some reason, they're still turned on, um, but I believe there's a space you can actually turn these off under the interface. I think it's these navigation controls. You can turn those off as well. Uh, I never use them, so keep them turned off. Now, just a few other basic settings I have here. I have my resolution scale set to 1.3 because, in my opinion, the 1 is way too small. So I put that to 1.3. Um, that's really all I do for the interface. You can customize your themes on your own under the 3D viewport. Uh, the main thing I've changed in here is I've made my face orientation front alpha set to 0. So that way, um, for example, if I have a flipped face and I go to face orientation, it's not going to show the blue colors. It'll only show the red. It's a little bit cleaner to me. In the viewport anti-aliasing, I have set to 16 samples just to keep it clean. Not really sure if that like makes a difference, to be honest. That's just what I have it set to. Uh, and under system, just make sure if you're using a GPU, you have it set to uh, CUDA or OpenGL or whatever. Um, so I have mine set here, and I have my 3090 ticked on. And I've also made my global undo step set to the max, 256, but I also have 64 gigs of memory, so I have a lot of room there. So that's kind of up to you. Now guys, as for the add-ons I'm using, most of you are curious about this. I'm only using a few primary add-ons in my workflow. The first one, which you should get right now because it's free, is the machine tools add-on. And once you've gotten the machine tools add-on, you basically go up here to edit, preferences and you go to add-ons and click on install and just select the zip file that you downloaded and then you can um, basically search for machine tools tick that on 
and these are the settings I'm using if you want to copy mine. I have the first four menus turned on and then I have um, focus turned on as well. There's a bunch of different settings in here. I'm not going to go over all of them obviously, but Ryu actually made a complete machine tools masterclass a few months ago. So if you want to check out those videos, I'll have them popped up on the screen now and also linked in the description if you want to learn a bit more about machine tools. Now the other three add-ons I'm using is Hard Ops Box Cutter. So Hard Ops and Box Cutter you can buy in a bundle for 37 bucks. Um, if you see my videos before, you'll know that's the only set of hard surface modeling add-ons that I use. So you can pick those up on Gumroad or Blender Market. And once again, you would just install those in here. You'd have Hard Ops and then you would have Box Cutter. Now I don't really, I haven't really set anything up in here. I just leave it on the default. And uh, yeah, those are the two modeling add-ons I use. Now the fourth add-on you should get is Mesh Machine. I recently made a video on Mesh Machine and how it works and kind of how it emulates a CAD workflow inside a Blender. So if you want to check that out, once again, I'll have a link to that video in the description and also a pop-up on the screen now. So if you want to learn more about Mesh Machine, um, you can check those videos out. But those are the four primary add-ons I'm using. Machine Tools is, there's no excuse not to get it because it's free. And basically what it allows you to do is hop in and out of uh, vertex mode, face mode, edge mode, and object mode very quickly. If you're not used to these pie menus, it's going to take some time to get used to, maybe a few days. Um, but eventually you'll just be able to hop in and out of these pie modes without really thinking about it. It'll become muscle memory. So it just really saves you time. So if I'm modeling, I want to quickly, you know, get into... Um, you know, face mode or something, I just tab into it and I'm done. So really saves me some time. So those are the only add-ons I'm really using. Um, occasionally, I do use a few of the built-in ones. So if you want to know which ones those are, just turn on the F2 add-on, turn that on, turn on Node Wrangler as well, and also turn on the extra objects um, right here. So if you're watching my tutorials and you have those turned on, you should be able to follow along just fine. And a little bonus add-on that is also free that I use religiously is the power save add-on. And the reason I like this is because if I'm working, say I'm making, you know, I have a scene. What I can do is I can save my scene. So for example, I could go here and then type in example 01, right? And then let's just say I make some changes and, you know, I do some changes here or whatever. What I can do is I can actually click on the power save button here. And what this will do is it'll make a separate save so that way um, I can always revert back to an older save if I really mess something up and I want to go back to an older version. So usually every few minutes I'm just um, I'm using power save to save a new file. Not too worried about the size on my hard drive because hard drive space is cheap nowadays and the blender files are really small. So this is something I use a lot as well just so that way I can go back to my old files if I need to. You want to make sure you're giving yourself as much versatility as possible when you're working so that way you don't mess anything up. So these are basically all the add-ons I'm using. This is how I have Blender set up. So I'm not using anything complex. My setup is very simple. I use a few primary add-ons in my workflow and yeah, that's it. So for anyone that was asking, this is how I have my Blender set up and hopefully it kind of gives you um, an idea of how I work. Feel free to copy it as well. It's going to help you out a lot. So. That's it for this video. Hope it helps you out and I'll see you in the next one.